Welcome to CivilNet. My guest via Skype from Erbil in Iraqi Kurdistan is journalist uh, Mohammed Salih. He is an expert on Kurdish affairs. Mohammed, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, we asked you to speak to us today uh, because of the ongoing crisis uh, in Iraq with the Yazidi population there. Um, I think the whole world has been following the, the tragedy that was unfolding uh, with the you know, minority Yazidis in Iraq being attacked by ISIS, the Islamic State for Iraq and Syria. And some of the images that we saw and the stories that we read, uh, I think really uh, shook us in a way that uh, it was almost astounding for us to be witnessing what most of us consider to be a genocide taking place in the 21st century. Um, can you tell us now, following the U.S. Air airstrikes excuse me, and the Kurdish uh, Peshmerga shelling on the ground, what is the situation now of the Yazidis? There has been certainly a quite considerable uh, degree of success over the past uh, few weeks. Uh, most importantly, the, the vast majority of the Yazidis have been rescued from Mount Sinjar, where they were trapped by ISIS or uh, the Islamic State militants. Uh, in terms of military progress on the ground, uh, the, the Kurdish Peshmerga forces have been able to push back uh, IS militants in some areas, especially near the Iraqi Kurdish capital Erbil, and also, uh, very importantly, areas surrounding uh, Mosul Dam, which, uh, as you might know, uh, is Iraq's largest and also uh, said to be the most dangerous dam in the world. And uh, any demolition of that dam could, uh, could have really catastrophic uh, outcomes uh, for millions of Iraqis. Um, Mohammed, I, I want to ask you, um, we understand that ISIS claims sort of religious and moral authority over Muslims in the world and the Yazidis are a religious minority within the Islamic faith, but why were the Yazidis specifically targeted in this way? Well, from uh, IS militants' point of view, it's not actually only non-Muslims who are, who are considered to be fair targets, it's also uh, those Muslims who do not see the world the way that IS does uh, are seen as enemies. Uh, but in the case of the Yazidis, uh, given that uh, they have existed in the area for several thousands of years uh, as a religious group and they, they have adhered to their religion throughout centuries and millennia of upheavals in this part of the world, uh, the, 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 the IS militants uh, definitely did not look favor favorably upon uh, their religious beliefs and uh, they, they have been accusing them of all sorts of things uh, from being uh, devil worshippers to pagans or uh, basically any, any kind of labels uh, that, that could uh, justify from their point of view uh, their onslaught of the, of the Yazidi minority in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they seem to be fair game. Uh, you know, ISIS or IS militants, as you say, this is not a new phenomenon. They've been around for a number of years. It was only during and uh, after the civil war taking place in Syria that they've really gained a lot of momentum and now they're making international headlines because of the tactics that they use and because of, of almost uh, the, 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 the horrible way that they have been conducting themselves. I, I know that sounds kind of contradictory what I'm saying because perhaps in, ro in war there are rules as well and they seem to have broken all of those rules. Now that they seem to have been pushed back uh, temporarily I presume, where do you see the, how do you see this developing in, in the region? Do you see ISIS pulling back completely or is this just a temporary lull uh, in the conflict? Well, it is very difficult really to make any uh, predictions about what might happen in the future. And uh, let's not also overstate uh, the extent of the success that has been achieved on the ground in terms of pushing back the IS militants. Uh, they still control a very large territory inside Iraq that uh, includes uh, several provinces or parts of several provinces 
and they have proven to be a very formidable and uh, resilient force. So the, the war, the fight against ISS or IS is going to be a long one and uh, it's certainly also going to be a very bloody war and uh, without proper action on the ground by, by the Kurdish forces, Iraqi forces and some sort of regional coordination and international support, it will be really very difficult to, uh, to push these people out of Iraq or even to, to defeat them in the region. Uh, you know, being located in Erbil, you're really in the heart of the storm. Um, how has the humanitarian relief effort uh, worked? Uh, you said that most uh, or all of the Yazidis have now been evacuated from Mount Sinjar. Uh, how are their needs being met and how has the international sort of global humanitarian uh, reaction been? Well, the, the humanitarian reaction, uh, or at least the military side of it, uh, was uh, to a very large extent successful in the sense that the vast majority of people stranded on Mount Sinjar have been rescued. So, uh, given what happened to these people and given what could actually happen if uh, they had not been rescued and saved, uh, it has been quite successful the way that uh, the people who were caught on the mountain have been rescued. Uh, but in terms of providing aid or relief to the um, tens of thousands of refugees, actually hundreds of thousands of them uh, in the Kurdistan region of Iraq, uh, if you actually go and speak uh, to most, uh, most of these uh, refugees or internally displaced people, INDPs, they, they, they would uh, complain very seriously about the condition that they are living under and uh, they certainly are coping with very difficult conditions. Uh, it's a very uh, hot uh, weather. It's very hot here, really. The, the, the temperature is usually over 40 degrees uh, Celsius. And uh, many of them, the, 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 the good thing for many, for many of them is only that they have really managed uh, to, to be in a safe area and be away from uh, IS. Uh, otherwise, apart from uh, security, they, they are living under very difficult conditions, although there has been uh, quite a serious uh, effort by the international community, by the local Kurdish government, uh, to, to provide for these people, but the, the sheer size of the refugees uh, is, is, is really so, so huge and overwhelming that that would make it very difficult for, for any government or even for an international uh, effort and campaign to be able to, to really address the needs of uh, these people anytime soon. Yeah, well, Mohammed, you're a journalist and I know that you can appreciate how fast the news cycle moves on. And once we hear that uh, the Yazidis have been evacuated and that the imminent danger has subsided, people move on to other issues, but they don't realize the real human tragedy that continues to persist. Uh, and here in Armenia, we have uh, one of our largest minorities are the Yazidis. Uh, Armenia's government has also pledged uh, humanitarian support uh, for the Yazidis in Iraq. So uh, we are very closely following what's taking place. Uh, we are not far from the region. The Middle East uh, is, you know, just our next door neighbor. And so I'd like to thank you for helping us to understand a little bit more of what's taking place and what the condition of the Yazidis are uh, in Iraq today. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest was Mohammed Sali. He is a journalist based in Erbil who specializes in Kurdish issues. Stay with Civil Net.